this is the most important step that i was talking about hello everyone welcome back let's say you have a scenario uh, where you have your terraform files inside your git repository in this case github and you want to provision infrastructure on google cloud so whenever you ask this question whether it is an interview or whether it is in a google cloud professional architect exam so the first thing that you would get in your mind is to use a service account keys and provision infrastructure on google cloud so that would be a big mistake if you know the reason please let me know in the comment section for those who are aware of google cloud service accounts and etc for those who are watching this video to understand the concept feel free to continue with this video the biggest security risk using service account keys is that there are long lived keys uh, that you want to store inside github or you might expose it or you might have it in your computer or you might lose it and whenever you lose it somebody can use those service account keys and provision infrastructure or hack into your google cloud project so instead of that the best approach is to use something called workload identity federation which is a service inside google cloud so using wif you're going to use short lived tokens to talk to gcp from github Uh, using github actions and provision infrastructure now there are two methods one method is using service account but not using service account keys but using service account to create short lived federated tokens and the other method is direct method which i'm going to show in this video which is the preferred way because the short lived tokens in the direct method will be will be uh, for 10 minutes instead of the service account which i think will be for 1 hour so the lesser time it is you know it is more secure So there are only few commands that you have to follow but there is one specific step a uh, lot of people miss that to give permissions using the principal I'm going to show you that as well uh, so watch this video and if you have any questions let me know in the comment section So first step is to create a workload identity pool So copy this command and you don't have to worry about these commands I'm going to paste the GitHub link that actually is created by uh, Google Cloud themselves As usual you have to authenticate your terminal to connect to Google Cloud using your uh, either service account or your own identity so in my case i'm using the user because i am the owner of this project so i'll have all the permissions to perform these actions so for instance just to show you so as you can see here my account is my email address which is the owner and then uh, the project which i have already set here So I'm going to perform the first command. So gcloud iam workload entity create pool. So here we are creating the pool of your of your identities. Again, you can perform this from the console as well, but it's easier to do it from command line. Okay. So the entity pool is created. If you want to go and go to your console and click on workload entity federation, you're going to see the pool that is just got created, which is a GitHub Actions pool. So the next step is to get the full ID of the workload entity pool. Can copy, paste. This is the pool name. You can copy it and paste it somewhere here for for our future reference. And you can as well get this name from here once you click on GitHub Actions pool. So the next step is to create workload identity provider in that pool. I'm going to copy this command. I'm going to show you what exactly I'm doing here. So gcloud iam workload entity providers create oidc. I'm creating oidc provider. The name is my repo and the project is your google cloud project and the location is global. And for the workload entity pool where I'm going to create this provider is inside this github. identity pool that i have just created which is uh, as you can see the id is github and the display name is you can give any display name so these are the important attribute mappings that i'm going to show in the console as well the repository name uh, for instance the owner of the repository here i'm using the cloud advocate which is the org name which is what i have mentioned here i'm going to paste the link of my repository as well in the description and then uh, issue your uri which is tokens dot actions github user content dot com enter 
So now if I go back to workload identity pool and refresh the screen. So there is a provider here. You click on this. You see the provider on right hand side. And then if you click on edit, you can see the attributes here. So you can also give your branch name if you want to give. If you need that attribute conditions, let me know in the comment section. Now, next important thing that uh, we have to perform is to extract the resource name. Which is this, copy this and paste it somewhere here, which is of the provider and we have two names here, one is of pool and one is of provider. So the next thing is that uh, as it is mentioned in this document, the next step is to give permissions to that principle so that whenever you're using this uh, from, from uh, GitHub Actions, your Terraform is going to perform those actions. I mean, your Terraform will have enough permissions to create resources. So that example is also given here, but for that we need to get the principal set. I need to form this principal set. Okay, so I'm going to again paste this link uh, of the principal set in the description. So the principal set is going to be of something like this that I've used in past, which uh, I'll paste it here. So which is principal set and then uh, projects, everything is same, locations, global, workload, identity pools. And then uh, here for the pool name, it has to be GitHub pool. So I'm going to rename this. This is my old pool that I've used. GitHub attribute dot repository is a uh, cloud advocate and Google cloud is, is the GitHub repo name. So this is the principal set. Now the most important thing is we have to give permissions to this principal set so that you can use your Terraform code to provision, in, uh, provision the resources. I'm going to show you a specific example where I'm using my Terraform code to create a VPC inside Google cloud project. I'll share this link in the description as well. Uh, click on Terraform inside my repo. And you will see that I'm going to perform this action called apply.sh, which is going to call main.tf and inside main.tf, I'm calling a VPC, I'm, I'm using VPC module and provisioning a VPC. And if I go back to the Google Cloud and open my workflows, I'm using this build v1.yml. So here, uh, this is the action that you're going to use, which is auth at the rate uh, version two. And if you're using service account, you will have a different action altogether. And uh, in this, I'm going to replace this workload entity provider with the one that, that we have just created. Okay. This is the one that I've used in past and uh, edit this file instead of DevOps pool, it is going to be GitHub and then providers, providers, my repo. Okay, all right. So now commit the changes. Committing to the main branch directly and then copy this. And I have to make in another YAML file, which is here. Okay, so now I have my uh, build.yml and destroy.yml in the GitHub Actions. So the next important thing is, let's say if I run this command right now, Let's go back and I'm going to show you the error that you're going to get if you do not give permissions. So let's say I'm going to run this command and which I've run it previously, which was working fine. Run workflow. So click on the infra build. So first part, which is authenticating to the Google cloud is successful. And the important part here is the Terraform couldn't perform action because it did not have permission to perform those actions. For instance, Terraform has to initialize and then use the Google cloud storage objects, or, you know, it has to, let's say it has to first initialize the configuration in the GCS bucket, which is Google cloud storage bucket. It was, it was not able to do that. So to fix this, this is the most important step that I was talking about. You have to give permissions to this principal set. 
So this step I'm going to do from the cloud console. So go to your, go to your console and then go to IAM section. The frustrating part is that whatever permission that you give for IAM, which with respect to the principal set, I, have, I, I was not able to see those uh, permissions here. Though you can, it creates, but it, it won't show in the console. Maybe if you know what is the solution for it, let me know. So paste this principal set and then I'm going to give broad permissions here, which is not recommended. Now storage. Admin. Okay. And as well as because I'm creating VPC, I'm going to give network admin. Compute network admin. And that's it. Click on save. So it shows as policy updated, but like I've said, I do not see the principle here in the console. Uh, one important thing though is that whenever you make changes to the policy, it might take few seconds or even I think one or two minutes to be to for it to propagate or for it to get into effect. So wait for a few seconds and then go back to your GitHub actions. So I'm going to rerun this and see if everything is done. So now uh, the Terraform init is successful and uh, Terraform plan is also successful. So it was able to connect to the project and provision the resources. So the job is complete now and uh, I'll go back and destroy this resource which I've just created inside my Google Cloud project. So this is the best way and the safe way to provision resources in Google Cloud using GitHub Actions from GitHub. I hope you like this video and, uh, and let me know in the comment section if you have any questions around this. But if you follow this properly and if you give the right permissions, you should be able to provision resources in Google Cloud. You should be able to get this tutorial working. Thank you all again for watching this video. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, click on subscribe. Take care. Bye.